Welcome to another episode of Crosstalk. Velocity Cross at Prado Regional Park in Chino has been one of my favorites for two reasons. One, it's close to my house, and two, it's pretty flat. I got a front row call up, so I knew I had to make it count. Because of the course layout, group dynamics and tactics often come into play here, and that's the theme of this episode. As I've said before, a good start is key so you can be in the lead group at the first tricky section, pinch point, or bottleneck. In other words, if people are going to slow down, you want to get there first. And on this course, it happened to be a corner. Let's look at that again. We're going into this corner three wide. The middle rider has the racing line. He pinches off the rider on his right before the turn. Then he is able to shut the door on the rider to his left at the exit of the turn. There's a little hand checking going on, but that usually just causes you to lose your position. And the rider on the inside, well, he has a clear path to move ahead. Being close, but not too close to other riders, is an important skill in cyclocross. This stage of the race is all about establishing your position. If you see any opening, try to move up. Right now I'm in the lead group, sitting in fifth place. Going wide left here lets me square off these S-turns to take them in a straight line. There's one fast line through here, so trying to move up would waste a ton of energy. But a good line allows you to conserve a little, so then you can punch it when the time is right. Knowing where to move up is just as important too. At the barriers, the lead group is still intact, and I try to stay smooth. Everyone holds their spot over the barriers, but during remounting, I was able to sneak up a spot. Now I'm sitting in fourth. This section highlights line options. You can run and square off your turn at the apex, or you can carry more speed and ride the low line, even though you have to travel further. At this point, Brandon Baker has attacked our group and is in the lead solo. So if we don't catch him, the best placing someone in our group can get is second. I follow Kevin too close here and buzz tires. Drafting in cyclocross is kind of unique. You want enough room to alter course if the rider in front of you wobbles, but you also want enough space so that you can take your lines at the speed you want. I get separated and I have to chase back. We're still in the first chase group when Kevin attacks us. He takes off and now we're racing for third. Analyze the group you're in. Know what places your group is racing for and see if those fit your goals. Another way to analyze the group is to see how you're feeling in the group. Do you feel like you could go a lot faster? Then attack the group. But maybe you're at your limit, even when you're tail gunning. Then do your best to stay in the group and conserve where you can. We're still in a group of four when Mike starts to move to the front. On this course, you can get separation at the corners with fast lines. And fast lines happen at the front. Mike pulls away and Garrett starts to bridge up to him. If I stay with them, I can still battle it out for third. But if I get dropped, the best place I can get is fifth. This was all going through my head while I felt like I was having a heart attack and root canal all at the same time. The elastic started to stretch, then snap. I'm unhinged. Now I'm in a weird no man's land. On my own, I'm not fast enough to bridge up, but I still don't want anyone behind me catching. I'm still in fifth place, which is the last spot on the podium. I try to keep smooth, ride good lines, and keep the power up. With one lap to go, I finally get company. There's two options here. Work together to try and bridge up, or conserve energy and sprint. Remember, fifth place is still possible. But I see an opening at the barriers. Kenton stumbles, and in the heat of the race, I couldn't exactly see why. On the slow-mo, it looks like at the moment that the left foot should come out so that he can start running, the foot momentarily gets stuck in his pedal. He saves it by lifting his bike up by the hoods on the handlebars. His balance and reflexes save the day. Could have been another Joey. But at the time, the only thought I had was, this is my chance. Even though I felt like I didn't have two muscle cells to rub together, I clicked it up a gear and put it in the tag. I knew all the spots I could make up time. I carried speed through the tricky 180. I went wide, apex wide on all the turns. And out of every turn, I sprinted to get that bike back up to speed. As I neared the pits, 
tried to glance back, and I still had a gap on Kenton, but I knew I couldn't let up. I pushed a huge gear up the hill coming out of the pits. I knew the finish was on pavement and that it favored a sprinter. I didn't want to start my sprint too early, so I went with about 200 meters to go. My entire body was hurting, and I started to see lap riders. But at the same time, my legs were starting to spin out and I had no more gears. So much for CX1 saves lives. And right up the line, out of the corner of my eye, I see Kenton sneak by me to pit me for fifth place. You got me right the line. Man, what a race. Nice. I seen you make that little bobble after the barrier. Yeah. And I tried to capitalize, but he had oh, a really good sprint. Trust me. You put me in the hurt locker for a while. <laughs> Oh man, good sprint. I was a little disappointed, good but I still got sixth, and I still keep my front row call up, which is a prize in itself. Like any race, cross specific skills were important here, but just as important were understanding group dynamics and tactics. I learned a lot, and I hope you all got something out of it too. So, till next time, stay hungry, and I hope to see you out at the races.